Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrac. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, October 15th. What appears to be either new Tesla Cybertruck bodies or prototypes was spotted at Gigafactory Texas ahead of the start of production. The current official timeline for production isn't exactly clear, so we're left to speculate with clues like this one. A drone flyover video of Gigafactory at Texas spotted those two trucks under a sheet. As noted by the drone pilot, it appears that the trucks were delivered to the plant rather than just made there. These are likely validation units. Tesla was only known to have a few Cybertruck prototypes until recently, so technically this could be doubling Tesla's fleet with the addition of the new two trucks. Tesla is reportedly running into problems establishing battery cell production at Gigafactory Berlin, and they are moving their battery manufacturing equipment to Texas. For over two years now, Tesla has been working to build its own battery cells with the new 4680 format, which they are currently running in Fremont. Tesla is also planning to establish production at Gigafactory Berlin and Texas, but it seems that Berlin is going south. Germany's publication called Handelsblatt previously reported that Tesla planned to move some battery cell manufacturing equipment to Texas, but now they suggest, translated from German, quote, The fact that Tesla will not start full battery cell production in its German plant in Grunheim for the time being apparently has other reasons than lower energy costs and new tax incentives in the USA worth billions. Several sources close to the electric car manufacturer report a significant delay in a crucial but highly complex production technique. Now, the reason behind the move is not completely clear. However, Handelsblatt goes on to say that Tesla wants to focus on successfully deploying its dry coating of the electrodes here in the USA first. The former CEO and founder of Nikola Motors, Trevor Milton, has been found guilty on three out of four counts of fraud. Milton was charged with two counts of securities fraud and two counts of wire fraud pertaining to statements he made while he was acting chairman and CEO of Nikola. After the founding of Nikola, investment money began pouring in and promises began flowing out. A key focus of Milton's deception was in a report that claimed that Nikola staged the first video of its hydrogen truck driving by simply rolling it down a hill. Milton ended up leaving the company shortly thereafter and the investigation had commenced. Until yesterday, Milton had been deep in litigation and on a $100 million bail. Nikola Corporation, on the other hand, they complied with the investigation, paid a hefty fine, and now they're beginning to make a comeback. They have even delivered some vehicles to customers. The company issued a statement further distancing themselves from Milton. Lucid Motors is rolling out its largest software update yet, with User Experience 2.0. It includes improvements throughout pretty much the whole vehicle. We have a full list of features on screen and also more information on our site, electrek.co. Most of them improve upon the existing features, but a few stood out to me were the instant start as the driver sits and is buckled. That sounds pretty fun. They also have a rear pedestrian collision protection that is quite handy, and I'm curious to see how they plan on improving the locking features or unlocking features. That should be pretty fun to investigate. After several months of lobbying the U.S. officials over the EV tax credit changes, Hyundai Motor Corporation is officially going to start construction of its EV manufacturing plant. Hyundai will break ground on its massive $5.5 billion electric vehicle factory in Bryan County, Georgia, and this will begin on October 25th. The 3,000-acre project plans to begin construction in early of 23 and is expected to create around 8,100 jobs. Hyundai is currently seeking a delay to the phase-in period for the newly passed U.S. climate bill so that their EV models can still qualify for the tax credit until the plant is fully operational. Porsche is making their vehicles more efficient through a software update resulting in range bumps. There are 10 different Taycan trim and model combinations getting better range, the lowest being the Taycan 4S sedan, which is getting 4% better range, the highest is the Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo, which is getting 14.2 better range through an update. Unfortunately, there are two trims not getting any range improvements with the new software. That's the Taycan GTS sedan and the Taycan GTS Cross Turismo. Porsche is talking about the update as if it is being delivered over the air. However, the press release makes it sound like the owners still need to bring their vehicles into the shop. It's not that bad. I mean, for better range, easy fix. Ford Canada has reported a new film used electric power from several of their vehicles to make the filming possible. 
The movie was set in the forest, so it was a good thing that mobile electric power is now a viable option with recent EV battery tech advancements. Cool. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Lay Zero says, Best quick recap EV channel. Let's blow this channel up. Thank you, Lay Zero. The best way to blow up the YouTube channel is to engage with the conversation in the comment section every single day. Share it with your friends and click the like button once and the dislike button twice. If you value this channel's content more than I do myself, you can click the bell icon to have your phone harass you every day when I post up a video. I wouldn't recommend doing this because you and your loved ones deserve your own time. We live in a world where the attention of you, the viewer, is the commodity. And I hope that the people watching are here for an EV news recap and not because their neural systems have been fish hooked by a beep on their phone. And by the way, I am aware of the irony of appearing on YouTube in order to decry it. Okay, it is opinion time. Two years ago, about one week after starting the channel, actually, I made a video covering the recent news of the blunders of Nikola Motors. After watching it again, my opinion on the company hasn't changed too much, other than now their founder is out of the loop. But I'll play this segment as we close the show. I hope that the staff at Nikola Motors can turn this around and make a viable and honorable competitor in the EV space. Heaven knows that there's a lot of people out there who don't like Tesla for plenty of reasons, and there's lots of space for a solid company with a decent product to earn and keep customers. When Nikola starts producing on their promises, we should treat them with respect. Trust, on the other hand, that comes a little bit later. Thanks for watching Electrek Daily. Let me know what you think of the format, and I will see you guys on later.